see on TV. Most of it's going to be happy holiday. Why? Because they want to take Christ out of everything. But you know what? We can't blame them because families are taking Christ out of their own. And Sister Michelle said it again. It's amazing how the Lord moves and talks to different ones and speaks to different ones just to kind of channel the message the way He wants the message to go. Because this is not a one-man show. He came to minister. Whether you use a Sister Ashlyn, Sister Michelle, one of you out there, He came to minister. I'm just a voice. All we are is a voice. John the Baptist said, I'm just a voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We're just a voice. But you know what? We can blame, we can blame the stores and we can blame the politics and we can blame everything else. But you know what? Families are taking Christ out of their own home. Many of the children today, they don't even know what it is to celebrate the birth of Christ. Well, for the true meaning of what the birth of Christ is, that Jesus was born. But again, someone mentioned this. Sister, Sister Ruthie mentioned this. But why was He born? Why was He born? He wasn't born just a babe in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. But it was way beyond that. For God so loved the world that He gave. Right. It all began in a manger. Years and years ago, this little babe was born of a low estate within a manger. But He was born to walk through life and go through life, living a sinless life, so that He could die upon the cross of Calvary. You see, the, the manger was just the beginning. Then it was the cross and the resurrection. And what does that mean to you and I? Again, it's a gift that just keeps on giving. God gave this baby. But we're going to talk this morning somewhat about blessings. You know what a blessing is? A blessing is something that God gives to us. Did, we, did, you, did she write that? A blessing. Something God gives to us to flow through us unto others. That's what a blessing is. So many people got blessings mixed up. They think blessings is receiving. Receiving. And the ultimate end of a blessing is not receiving, even though you have to receive to be able to give. But let's look at, let's look at this scripture. Acts 20, 35. I have shewed you all things how that so laboring you are to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus. Who said this? Who said these words? How He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You see? Blessings are meant. When God gives you a blessing, a blessing is not meant just to hoard it up inside of you. But a blessing is meant to flow through you Amen. unto others. That's what a true blessing is. Now we want to go to Luke, the first chapter, because I'm going to show you this. You got it? Yeah, Luke 39, 30. Yeah, I'm sorry, we got two of them, right? <laughs> and, Ma and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacchaeus and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why was Mary blessed? So that the babe that she had, she couldn't keep it in there. It was meant to come out. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. 
The babe, the reason Mary was blessed is so that she could give and so that she could birth this child. You see, again, because it's a gift that just keeps on giving. What, what is a blessing? A blessing is something that God gives to flow through you unto others. Mary was the one that was going to bring forth Jesus. So she was blessed in that manner. And the Bible says, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. So she was blessed by giving the world Jesus. And again, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. So you see, Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the blessing is continuing to flow on. Okay, did we stop there? And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, he or she that believeth, for there shall be a performance out of those things which were told her of the Lord. Blessed, you see, there's going to be a performance when you truly blessed. When you truly blessed, then what you're blessed with is going to cause you to perform. Again, Mary was blessed and she gave birth to a child, which was Jesus Christ. Then blessed be the fruit of thy womb. Jesus Christ was blessed. But what was his blessing? We look, how, how was he blessed? He was going to die on a cross of Calvary. You know how we look at blessings today? We have the wrong perspective of true blessing. What is a true blessing? A true blessing is something that, that God gives us to flow through us unto others. Now, for Jesus to really be blessed and for that blessing to flow through Him onto others, what did He have to do? He had to die upon the cross of Calvary. He had to hang upon the cross and He had to be ridiculed and He had to be mocked. He had to be put to shame upon that cross. But yet, He was blessed. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You see the true blessing because it just kept on giving. But you see what His blessings led Him to. His blessing didn't lead Him to a fine chariot. His blessing didn't lead Him to all the, you know, what the world looks as blessings today. Oh man, I've been blessed because I received it. I've been blessed because I received that. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So if you have received something and you are truly blessed, it's meant for that blessing to flow through you. It's meant for that gift to flow through you. Some of you have been blessed up and you've been blessed maybe with a voice to sing. Well, it's not just for you, but you're to sing and let that flow. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let those gifts that you have flow through you. I've been blessed with the gift of preaching. But I don't go around just preaching to myself. You see, it's something that flows through me unto others. And I count myself as truly being blessed. If I don't have two pennies to rub together, I'm still blessed. And you know what? Every one of you have the gift of love. I think about Brother Johnny. I never saw a man that loved so much. He just loves everybody and loves so deeply. And he wants to, he want, he goes around witnessing the people and praying for people. He wants to see people saved. And, and you know, it, it's not that he got more money than he ever had before in his life. It's not that he's catching more crawfish than he ever. Man, I, we've been blessed with the crawfish. We've been blessed with the crawfish. Well, let me tell you something. I'm blessed if the crawfish run. If the crawfish don't run, I'm still blessed. 
Because you know what? There's still another soul out there that God has gifted me to preach to. There's still another soul out there that God has, has gifted you to reach to someone that's lost and dying and going to hell. You see, because this is a gift that just keeps on giving. We think about guilt. We think about blessings. We think about gifts. Some of you sitting here today, and you might count your blessings about how much money you got in your pocket, how much money you got in the bank. You might you might count your blessings of how, how nice of a house you live in, or how fine of a car you drive, and you may count your blessings like that. But I don't really look at those things because you see, Jesus was blessed. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. But where was he going to be born? You said it this morning. On that old... She, she had me scratching. <laughs> she mentioned that old head. And I found, you know, you automatically... And I was find myself wanting to scratch. Can you imagine on a bed of hay and swaddling clothes laying in a manger with the cows and with the smell of the farm right there? That's where our gift was born. But it said, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You don't hear preachers talking about that today. Oh, God wants to bless you. You give me so much money and God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. I don't really count. You know, I, I, I look way beyond that for blessings. And you know, God, God had not you know, some of these preachers, you know, God bless me and, and they brag about the suits they wear, the fine suits they wear, and they brag about the fine cars they and they brag about this in front of the poor people that's given, in front of the willow women that's given their their probably taking their food money to support them, and they brag about the fine cars they drive and, and the fine houses they because they don't just have one house. The fine houses they live in. And they brag about all this. You don't find my Jesus bragging anywhere. But he was born of a low estate. He was born in a manger. But yet the Bible says blessed is a fruit. And Mary was blessed. Well, How was she blessed? Well, do you all understand? Mary was a single woman. Carrying a child. Can y'all imagine the gossipy tongues? It was just like it is today. You still had... I mean, humans are humans wherever you go. They, they, I mean, they, I bet them tongues was going nine into nothing. Well, look at her. She said that child born of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, can you imagine today? Y'all think about this today. If there was a woman going around pregnant... And she's saying, this child that I'm carrying, the Father, is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how many Facebook would be, uh, I mean, it would be, they would be burning it up. It would be smoking, Brother John. I mean, have you heard? Have you heard? And boy, they'd probably try to get a picture of her and capture a picture of her with her belly and so forth. Have you heard the latest? So it was the same. People are the same. Wherever you go, they may talk a different language. They may be of a different nationality, but people are the same. So, but she was blessed. Blessed are thou among women. Well, you know what? She probably didn't feel too blessed when she'd walk around and they got this little group of women over here and they yapping about her. And they got the men over here in this crowd. They yapping about her. What kind of woman is she? You know, so forth and so on. And she had, you might think, well, Brother Al, they didn't do all that. Yeah. What, world were you, what world you think they were living in? You see, the devil is the same devil. The devil that causes his gossipy tongue today, it's the same devil that existed back then. He didn't change that. I mean, they did it to, look what they did to Jesus. You don't think people, people can be cruel. People that can be cruel. And one of the cruelest things that you can do is use that tongue as a weapon to hurt people. But she was blessed. Blessed art thou among women. And that's where her blessing was. And then it says, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Well, let's look at his blessing. Well, he was born in a manger. Because he had no place. 
You know, and then in one place, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man have no place to even lay his head. He was a wonder. Well, a rock they could find to sleep, you know. And, and then, where did his journey lead him? It led him to the cross. Where he would hang up on the cross for people that he was dying for. <coughs> And they would laugh at him. And those beloved disciples, everybody started forsaking him. And he looked at his disciples and he said, Will you leave me also? And that beloved disciple Peter, he walked away from Jesus hanging on the cross. And I'm sure Jesus is looking down on all the scenes that are going on at the time. And there it is, Peter's warming his hands by the fire of the enemy. Saying, I don't even know that man. But he says, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. So what I'm saying to you church today, we look at blessings from the wrong perspective. The world has somehow marred our view and, and distorted our perspective of what a true blessing is. And we often say it, man, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. And I was thinking, I was sitting on the piano as different ones was talking, and I'm thinking, oh God, I've been, I've been blessed with the greatest blessing of all, which is the love of God. You know what? I can actually love my enemies. I can do good to them that despitefully use me. You know what? I can actually forgive when it's not within my own ability to forgive someone because you know with that human nature, you ain't really doing. But I can actually forgive someone when, when you know, it's all impossible to forgive them on your own. But because of the love of God, for God so loved the world that He gave, and it's a gift that just keeps on giving. Why? Because when He was hanging on the cross, He looked down upon that multitude, and He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Have you ever had something in your heart against someone and just couldn't get rid of it? Unforgiveness? Yes. How many of you ever? I, I, I've dealt with this. Yes. And, and you live long enough, you're going to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody does you wrong. Somebody does your child wrong. Somebody, you know, does something and you just can't get rid of that forgiveness. You can't get, I mean, at least you can't get rid of that unforgiveness. Yeah. But let me tell you something about this gift. This gift, He was able to give, forgive. You're able to forgive. Amen. You might say, Brother Rob, you just don't know. Well, is it, any, is it any worse than hanging on the cross and you actually dying for those people and they drive in spears in your side and they place a the crown of thorns upon your head? I mean, it's crushing through the skull. Can you imagine? The, you talk about a migraine headache. Can you imagine having those those big old thorn crushed through the skull, piercing into the probably the very brain, beaten with thirty nine stripes upon his back. Never did anything wrong, but the pilots I find no fault in this man, but yet they crucified him anyway. He asked for something to drink. And I thought, well, I couldn't even have treated a dog this way. And they gave him vinegar. Have any of y'all ever tried to swallow vinegar? They gave him vinegar to drink. All he was asking, all he was asking was somebody have enough compassion on me to give me a little drink of water. And they gave him vinegar to drink. But you know what he did? Anybody done you that wrong? I, I dare to say. Because you, you see, the reason I can say this is because he paid the ultimate price. Yes. Whatever you've been through, he's been tempted in like manner. Whatever you've been through, he went a step higher. You know what? Something about this sacrifice, this gift here. 
He it, it, it was it paid the ultimate. He paid the ultimate price. He went a step higher. You might say, Brother Ralph, I just don't think you just don't know my situation. I can't forgive. Well, he already he already paid the price for you and gave you the gift of love. Let me tell you something about this gift of love. This gift of love is powerful than death itself. Did you know the Bible? Love is more powerful than death. This gift of love that God has given you is more powerful than death itself. Okay, what is death? Death is something that totally separates. It's the end. Death, you know, talking naturally speaking here, it's the end. No more breath. It's, it's gone. You sever it. But love is more powerful than that. And this is a gift that He gave to you and I this morning. The gift of love. For God so loved the world He gave. You know, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Again, what is a blessing? Something that God gives to us to flow through unto others. And that's what Jesus did. Do you know He could have called legions of angels to come and loosen Him from the cross? You know what? It, it wasn't the nail, Sister Miriam, that held Him to that cross. Because He could have spoke the words and those nails would have dissolved. I, he could have spoke the Word and He could have been off of that cross and... You know, because he could have been somewhere. He did this before. He just disappeared amongst the crowd at one time because it wasn't ready for his crucifixion. He just disappeared. He could have all of a sudden them nailed. Let me tell you what those nails would have had to obey his voice. And those nails would have dissolved those nails in his hand and his feet. But it was love that held him to the cross. Love. For God so loved the world, He gave. Let me tell you something about love. Love gives. Brother Ralph, I need a blessing in my life. Let me tell you what, if you have the love of God, you have the greatest blessing. Amen. Yeah, but Brother Ralph, I need this, and I need that, and I need this, and I need that. Let me tell you, you know, I, read, I, I preached this message about my God shall supply all of your need. Everybody say N-E-E-D. -E period. It doesn't have an S on the end of it. My God shall supply all of your need. Hasn't He already done it? My God has already... And the reason that Scripture can say that is because my God has already supplied your need. All you got to do is accept it. Because a gift is something that you've got to accept. And this kind of gift, the blessing that God gives us, will flow through us. And let me tell you, when you truly get this gift, you're not going to just keep it to yourself. <laughs> How many, how many of you find yourself? And here, here I found me just stop this because I've got, so, I got so much I want to say this morning, I'll never get it all out. But God has pressed upon my heart. How many of you want to be truly blessed? Yes. Oh, Brother Ralph, I want, I want to be blessed going in and coming out. I want to be, and that's what the Bible, you can be blessed going in and coming out. Well, you know what? You can be blessed coming through those doors and you can be blessed going out. How are you going to be blessed? By taking what you receive out to others. You can be blessed coming in by hearing the Word of God because God will allow you to receive this gift. But once you receive this gift, you're not going to want to keep it to yourself. Again, Sister Michelle said, we take it for granted. We take it for granted. We just sat down on it. You know, and I'm not bragging on Brother Johnny this morning, but I, it's just something that just happened. He told me before he went and pray. He went. Uh, he went and uh, prayed for someone this morning before he even came to church. And again, I'm not planting any any roses on him, but I know where he used to be. 
I couldn't even have a conversation with him on at the boat landing because every word come out of his mouth was a cuss word. Hey, Is that yeah. true, Sister That's Janet? Right. You, you, his sister, you know. But look at him now. I watch him over here, and it's not a performance of the flesh. It's not a performance of the flesh, but it's a performance of the spirit. I watch him up here shaking and quaking on the anointing of God. And when he's got this gift, and he wants to get out there and share it with others. When is the last time you told someone and invited someone to the house of God? Or oh, when is the last time you gave this gift? Well, brother Bell, I sure wish I had the money to buy my kids some toys this year. I don't have anything to buy. Well, you got the greatest gift you could possibly give those kids. Let them know what Jesus is all about. Let them know what the spirit of Christmas is all about. Because I'm telling you, it's not about buying a toy. And I'm not against buying toys. That's secondary to me. If you want to buy your kids toys, buy them toys. But you better not forget what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. I told you this earlier. We blame the politics. We blame our leaders. We blame this one and we blame that one. But I can tell you, in a lot of Christian homes today, you ask someone, you know who's the, who's, who's the central figure of... Who is the central figure of Christmas for most children? Uh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus is coming to town. Well, let me tell you, Jesus already came and He already died. Santa Claus, it's all about, and Lord, please don't tell them children that Santa Claus don't exist. You'll upset those parents if you tell them Santa Claus is just a figment of somebody's imagination. Somebody, imagine this, that we're going to invent someone from the North Pole. Let me tell you, Jesus didn't come from the North Pole, but He came in a manger all about 2,000 years ago. But I guarantee you, you'll hear more about Santa Claus than you'll hear about Christ. Amen. That's true. And again, I'm not preaching about buying toys. I'm not trying to take away that from you. But let me tell you, again, you will upset parents if you tell those that Santa Claus doesn't exist. He's just a figment. But it's all right for them to talk and take put an X M A S. X M A S. That's all right. That's all right. You know you can't have Christmas pageants. You can't have the traditional Christmas pageant in schools anymore. They don't I don't even know if they even allow them to play the traditional Christmas song that talks about Jesus and the birth of Christ anymore. <coughs> Everything is being stripped away that pertains to Christ. And you know what? I may not be able to do anything about that. Because evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. The spirit of the Antichrist is already work. What does that mean against Christ? It's at work and that book is going to be fulfilled. So I ain't gonna be able, I'm not going to be able to stop that. But you can't stop it in your own home. I said, you can't stop it in your own home. If somebody mentions ha happy holidays, you say Merry Christmas. If they come at you happy holidays, uh, the only thing that makes it happy, and they don't even realize even saying that, that they're celebrating the birth of Christ because the only thing that makes us happy, the only thing that brings joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart. That's where it begins. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Then he goes on to say, He rules the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they were, even when they say it, happy holiday, they cannot squash it. Mm -hmm. They try to use different terminology. 
You know, if we don't put Christ in it. But again, what are the holidays? Think about it. What are the holidays? What is this world celebrating today? Christmas. Christ. They're celebrating Christ. Every toy that is bought, every gift that is given, every tree that is put up, every, every, any kind of decoration that is put up, uh, you know what? They may not realize what they're doing, but in their own way, they're celebrating the birth of Christ. Amen. Every light. They say this, and I don't know how many, was it 400 million lights in Dollywood? Yes. Oh my God. That is a lot. Is that 400, I think, Brother John, they told me 400 million lights in Dollywood. But every twinkling light, is celebrating. They may not intentionally be doing it. They may not want to be doing it. But every time they put up any kind of decoration, every time they do anything to celebrate Christmas, they're celebrating the birth of Christ. Amen. They can't get away from it. They want to get away from it. But they can't get away from it. Because He still rules the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's what I want to do this morning. How many of you want to truly be blessed? Yes. Now, when I say that, I'm not expecting you to get a raise on your job. <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of blessing. I don't, you know, oh, Brother Rabbi, I need me a new car. That's not what I'm talking about. Some love. Oh, yes. I want you to be able to get the gift of love. The gift that just keeps on giving. You know why? Because that old car is going to wear out. You may get it brand new. A gift for Christmas is going to wear out. How many of you got children? You got toys that's in your, in your closet. You don't even play with them anymore. You tell I don't. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. But when you really get that gift of love, you never get tired of it. You never get tired of that gift of love that God is because it's a gift that just keeps on giving. I want you to this morning because I want. I've got the love of God. I've received the love of God. But again, a blessing is something that God gives you, gives to you, to flow through you unto others. I want to be blessed with love. I've got the love of God. And I've received the love of God. But I want to be able, I want to give it out more. I want to give it out I want to leave out of this building because it's not just about coming in here and receiving. When you go out, then you go out giving. You go out giving. And you may do it in the form of monetary things. You may see a homeless person on the street and the love of God inside of you will say, well, why don't you give them something? You know, you may do it in that form. The love of God is, is revealed in many different ways. You may, you know, give to a, a project that's really helping the needy. That's, that's the love of God flowing through you unto others. But the main thing, that love doesn't want to see a soul dying and going to hell. That's right. So you've been gifted with a light that shines through you. I'm going to tell you what, church, that gift of love and that gift of light, it goes together. The gift of light and the gift of love that you have is meant for you to not put it under a bushel. That's what the Bible says. But you've got to get out there and let that light shine unto others. I want to be more of a witness. I want to be... I want to be... More like Brother Johnny. Yeah. Brother Ralph, you're supposed to be the... Yeah, I want to be more like Brother Johnny. I don't mind humbling myself to you this morning. 
and saying, I'm not exactly where I, I want to be in this area in my life. You understand what I'm saying, church? And some of you might sit up here and say, well, preachers are supposed to be up here. No, preachers are supposed to be honest. That's right. Preachers are supposed to be honest. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So, I want to be more of a witness, more of a testimony, not just within these four walls, but the Bible says go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. What is the greatest compelling force in the world? It's not hate. It's love. And it's not force. But it's love. The greatest compelling force in the world. And the Bible tells us to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Think about it. You can't grab somebody by force and say, you come to church with me and, and drag them through those doors. But I'm going to tell you what, love is more powerful than that. And when we really start showing the love of God and realize I'm blessed. Amen. And I'm not going to leave out of these doors with a mother grub. Poor me. Everybody else is buying gifts of crib. I don't have anything to buy. Hey, you got the great, let your light and love shine. That's the great. The world doesn't need another toy. The world, I said the world doesn't need another toy. What the world needs is a little bit more light and a little bit more love. So if you want to be blessed, I want you to come up here this morning. If you're capable of coming, I want you to come up here. The Lord laid this upon my heart to do this. If you truly want to be blessed this morning, I want you to make your way up to this front. I want to be blessed.